Hindu extremists burned home of ex-minister who compared them to ISIS. On Monday, November 15th, a group of ultra-nationalist Hindus set fire to the home of Salman uh, Rushid, the former foreign minister of India, after he published a book in which he compared radical Hindutva groups to Islamist groups such as ISIS and Boko Haram. The book, titled Sunrise Over Ayotthaya, uh, Nationhood in Our Times, centers around the Ad Ayotthaya, I, uh, that drives me crazy, uh, Ayodhya judgment in which the Supreme Court of India unanimously declared rights for constructing a temple to Lord Rama over the demolished Barbary Mosque, a site that, it is, that is in many ways a symbol of the nation's interreligious conflicts. Rashid's book actually praises the Hindu humanist elements of Hinduism and supports the controversial Ayodhya judgment, saying that, quote, it is an opportunity to find closure on the unpleasant past and look forward to a shared future. Police say 20 hardline Hindus gathered outside his home, shouted slogans, threw stones, broke windows, fire, set fire to a door, and burned an effigy of Rashid. Four suspects linked to the attack have been arrested. I just think it's absolutely ridiculous that he, he's like, you know, the, these people are making political Hinduism. And uh, he, he drew a comparison with them in a, in a, a, terrorist, a terrorist group. And they proceeded to, to terrorize his home. Like the lack of awareness is astounding. They were, I, I think they were just trying to show that he's right. I, I think they were just doing him a favor. I was like, yes, you are right. We are like ISIS. Let's let's let us demonstrate. <laughs> like, I mean, um, I mean, I don't know if like ISIS is fair to be honest. Like, I'm not, but they are extremists. Okay, I mean, compare. How did he exactly compare them? Because comparing two things does not mean that you're saying they're exactly the same. What did he say? What was the original statement? So, um. Mm -hmm. Let me find it. Okay, so I actually, he recently published an opinion piece about this incident that happened to him in um, the Indian Express. It was a beautifully written piece. Um, he's an extremely eloquent writer. It really made me want to go read the rest of his writing because um, his idea to crystallize these ideas and put it to the page was just really spectacular. But so here's, here's a segment um, in his own words. Um, so throughout my book, I have sought to support and endorse the Ayodhya judgment, despite many of my legal colleagues having doubted its legal correctness, acknowledged and praised the philosophy of Hinduism, underscored the humanist dimensions of uh, Sanatan Dharma. The thrust of the book is to promote religious harmony between Hindus and Muslims and highlight the Ayodhya judgment as an opportunity to find closure on the unpleasant past and look forward to a shared future. Sadly, all this has received little attention from the national media and members of the ruling party. Instead, they latched on to one sentence in chapter six that makes a distinct distinction between Hinduism and Hindutva. Quote, Sanatan Dharma in the classical Hinduism known to sages and saints was being pushed aside by a robust version of Hindutva, by all standards, a political version similar to the jihadist Islam of groups like ISIS and Boko Haram of recent years, end quote. Uh, that is the single, okay. that, that's what this is over. Okay. Wow. These people burned the guy's house down over that last line. That sentence. Wow, amazing, amazing. It can't, uh, okay. Um, well, congratulations, you played yourself. I mean, now more of us are going to read it. Like, what is it? What are you trying to get out of this? More of us are going to read that now, you morons. You got that morons. These people never learn. That's how, how that's how they keep make us grow by coming after us. Now they're everybody. Now we're gonna go read that thing that you that you were trying to silence. Congratulations. Also, we don't even need to read it. To compare you to ISIS because you because of what you did, you are showing it to us. Your exhibit A, you're demonstrating it. You goddamn idiots! You more like how do you not see this? How do you not see this? Also, the comparison was a lot more fair than I thought because I thought this is one of those people who's going to be like you are just like ISIS. Meanwhile, ISIS is a lot worse. Okay, ISIS is a lot worse. But what he was saying was the political nature, the fact that Hinduism, you know, they were 
polit making it, uh, they're creating an idea Hindutva. Okay, so I'm against Hinduism, extremely against Hinduism. However, Hinduism is not as political as Islam. Hindutva is. Hindutva is an ideology that is a lot more political than pure Hinduism. Okay, so this guy is saying just like Islam is a political ideology, Hindutva is also a political ideology. In that, if you're in that sense, they are extremely comparable. So he wasn't saying that like he wasn't when he was comparing them. He wasn't saying that they're exactly similar, which obviously they're not. But that was a completely fair thing to say. But go on. He goes on to say. Some ask if I am accusing Hindutva of terrorist conduct. And when I respond by saying the word terrorist has not been used anywhere, the media promptly says that I have clarified and withdrawn my accusation, pointing out that the word used is similar and not the same to highlight the common trait of misinterpreting religion and using a distorted version to hurt humanity falls on deaf ears. And, um, he, Can I add something? I mean, we disagree ahead. with this. We disagree with this, right? With the ex-minister who's saying like yes. misusing religion. Um, I mean, we think that religion is one of its main utilities is to be used politically exactly in this way, right? However, we like you know, our disagreements doesn't is minor compared to what um, our disagreements are with this kind of behavior, right? So even though I think like he thinks like Islam is being uh, used politically by like ISIS and other organization, and that's a misuse of Islam. In the same way, Hindutva is, um, you know, using Hinduism in a political way, and that's a misuse of Hinduism. Um, so we disagree with him because I think Islam is like by nature political. Uh, Hinduism only has recently become as this political. But still, I think the comparison is fair. Like, so I I agree with the comparison part, but I don't agree with the whole thing. But yeah, go on. So some things that are notable here is one, if you cannot tell by this minister's name, he does come from a Muslim background. What's also oh, notable, what's that, also that. notable is that he comes from the Congress, the Indian mm -hmm. Congress party. So the, the opposition party to BJP. Oh my God. This and, guy's triple target. This, tr this three targets on his back. One, what's, he's from the Congress party. Two, he has a Muslim background. And three, he wrote this article. Your house gets yes. burned out. But what's you so win. interesting is that um, he is known, or it, it, there are many Muslims in the Congress party that are in Congress who are known as governmental Muslims, which basically means like a Muslim only in name. Because like I said, he actually praises many aspects of Hinduism. He calls Lord Rama Iman al-Hin, Iman e hin sure. meaning like the leader sure. of India. So um in co like conservative muslims would really really despise someone like, like him because he is mm. um very liberally minded and has yeah. he's um, hated from all sides muslims. he's hated by the muslim community because he's liberal he's hated by the hindu community because he has a muslim background so he's like yeah attacked from all sides but yeah yeah um, I, I really want to read a little bit more of his opinion piece because I, I, I really loved what he wrote and just his way of um, talking. Several, several interlocutors have asked me to show even a single instance of unwholesome conduct by a Hindu follower. There is a long list, but revisiting those negates my purpose of reconciliation. Besides, they are hardly likely to accept what happened. Uh, uh, P. C. Dambaran put it wonderfully at the book release uh, function when he said, just as no one killed Jess Jessica, no one demolished the Babri Masjid. So he was, he's referencing a movie in India about a woman who gets shot by a politician's son and conveniently no one sees it. No one's willing to testify, even though there, there were dozens of witnesses. So the, it becomes no one killed her, right? So he's saying it's it's this thing where it's it's witnessed by everyone, but there is no willingness for accountability. There is no willingness for self-accountability. There is no willingness to actually um, self-reflect and in, uh, in, in talk about who's responsible for these crimes, right? So he's saying, just as no one killed Jessica, no one demolished the Barbary Mosque. Um, and then, and then he goes on to say, uh, my conversations with a variety of worthies from the BJP, the Bajrang Dal, the Vishra, Hindu Parashat, etc., at all can add to that. No one lynched Pelukan and uh, Ak Aklak. Uh, 
No one killed women in the Naro de Patia in 2002. No one raped girls in Unau and Hathras. No one burnt home. No one burnt homes in Mushras, <laughs> Muzaffar Nagar. No one killed Ishrath Jahan. No one uh, mowed down farmers in uh, Lakim Keri. And of course, no one killed Gandhi. I am. Um, Ooh, that was so huge. Um, by the way, for people who don't know that this Handutva um, RSS, mem it was the RSS member who killed Gandhi. So it was one of these um, Hindu extremists who did that. So that's what he's referring to. By the way, Susanna, we, we have only like another nine minutes. Um, so do you mind? Do you want to share the uh, videos and images of the man's house being burned down? Uh, sure. Um, yeah. Wait, there was one quote that I really wanted to say. The truth is we have for too long given the forces of Hindutva the freedom to push us around, giving the impression that they have a monopoly on the truth. As a strategy, it is expected to fade away as nature healed itself and the public discourse returned to normal. Yet it is, this latest episode tells us that each time we give an inch, the adversary tries to occupy several feet. It is time to draw a red line, not just for our welfare, but, the, but for the survival of our nation as we have known and imagined it. Further, it is not just about disagreeing about the nature and behavior of the Hindutva forces, but, but for applying ourselves to protect glorious religion, Hinduism, from the people who are threatening to undermine its humanism and who want a permanent divide between two important communities. We have to make a stand now and here. It is time for quibbling and hedging is long, to be long over. The fear of ad adverse reactions has prevented our best case from being put forward, and we have been written off by friends, even as the enemy has continued to batter us. Falsehood has never before had the stage as in recent years. Now, what do we have to lose but the chains in which the forces of the right have sought to place us? Uh, Amazing. That was really cool. And... We do. We, we 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 really do need to move to the fire, and then we have only one more. We also have okay. one more news to cover. I so wish very your little. computer was working, so I could have showed this in the background. What what do you think about um, his his statements there? That was that was very powerful, mm -hmm. very powerful. Yeah, I wish I could show it while you were reading that. That would have been good. But today my internet is like failing. Yeah, we're having all sorts of problems today. Oh, come on. Yeah, so here you can see his door that was burned down. And the title of the piece that he wrote was called No One Burnt My Cottage. Oh. That was very powerful writing. Yeah, just saying like just the way that no one no one demolished the Barbary Mosque, no one did this, no one did that. Like no one Guys, what you're mosque. watching, this is Hindutva did this because of an article. Okay? Just no, because of his book. Because of his book, okay? Like because of lines on a paper, because of an opinion, because of a comparison. Like this is what you do to a man's house. This is what Hindutva represents. This is what Hindutva represents. Just know that. Anyways, we have to move on to the and it's I, like we said in the beginning, it's just funny how they trip over themselves to prove their critics right. Being yeah. like, hey, you kind of uh, kind of have some really serious uh, political problems. It was like, yeah. we will burn down your house. <laughs> Anyways, I'm glad nobody got hurt. Um, yeah. yeah, saying don't say we're like ISIS or else we'll prove you right. Exactly. <laughs> Um, there, it's kind of like the meme of, you know, there was a meme of like a Muslims holding a sign. We will be had people who say that we are a violent religion. That was like, that was, that didn't actually happen. That was Photoshop. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but this is actually happening. Atheist Republic needs your help. We've been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below. 